Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to share with you my experience so far with the Livestock Electronics Maze, a routing, switching, mixing matrix with 16 bipolar or unipolar VCAs for level control within your routings. You can have any type of signal, audio, CV, trigger gates, clock pulses present at any of the four inputs for you to route in any amount, you can attenuate the signals, to any one or more of the four outputs. So you could send the signal present at input one to any of these four outputs, multiple outputs, full signal to output four, attenuated signal to output two, whatever. And you can also route, of course, multiple inputs to a single multiple or all the outputs and anything in between. The custom routing between inputs and outputs will constitute a preset, and the maze can hold six banks of 16 presets. This is bank one with direct access to 16 presets. You can select or switch between presets manually, as I just did, or by using CV modulation or trigger signal plugged here into the select input. And you can use the select signal to sequence preset switching in different ways, like uh, sequence forward, random, Euclidean, can change steps, amount, and range. We will eventually get there. We're going to look at all these things. Other important feature is that not only you can have any immediate change from one preset to the other, but you can also morph, fade, between current and next preset for some really nice smooth effect, evolving modulation, evolving changes in sound, mix, and so on. And you also have direct access to individually muting any of your routings, or you can mute more at the same time. You can unmute more at the same time, one at a time, or you can unmute all very quickly. Again, we will look at all of this in, in more detail later. Practically, it's a very capable and versatile module in 12 HPs, and you will soon see why. Now, two things. One, the lighting is not very strong. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about my video lights because I want to possibly show you as much as possible of the actual colors uh, of the uh, presets. So when we do things like uh, going negative and changing values from uh, red to purple to blue to green and so on, you will be able to see these changes without trouble. And I don't have anything plugged in yet because there is something I want to put across about this module before we go into, before we get deeper into practical examples. Before we move on, you will have noticed, I hope, <laughs> that uh, this is an earlier version of the maze. This one has a silver and green color scheme for the front panel. The current version comes in black. Livestock Electronics sent this maze to me some time ago so that I could play around with it and possibly make some videos, which is great. Thank you, Livestock Electronics. Sadly, that was just before I had to stop making videos for a while, as you guys already know. But here I am now. The current version of the maze, in terms of features and functionality, is the same module, but it now comes with a black theme on the front panel instead of a green, a white and green one. Otherwise, it's the same module. More about the panel graphics, the grid present on this version. There is no grid present on the other version. We'll talk about it later in this video. So what about my experience with it, the point I wanted to put across? Right. So to get to that point, I have to say that in a nutshell, I am getting a lot of use out of this module. It can be so many things. It's so flexible and useful that I end up using it in most of my patches. I never stopped using it. You will see it in my videos, in my future videos. I, I just keep using it because it can be so many things. For example, it can be a simple four channel mixer. Of course, a four inputs into four outputs matrix mixer. It can be a four channel gate patterns, triggers, clock router, mixer, muter, 
Of course, it can be a mute controller for audio and CV modulation. It can be the brain of feedback patches. It can be the brain of evolving drone patches, thanks to the ability to morph slowly or at a fast speed fade between presets and settings. It could be a two inputs stereo mixer with stereo send and return for stereo effects. You can even have it to work as a multi-channel 16 step sequencer. It can be a wave sequencer or wave audio switcher, a morphing fading controller, and probably other things you can think about. And you can save presets, variations, for each of these functions, patch types, setups I just mentioned. And in any type of patch, you can do immediate changes between presets or morph between presets. Now, the best part, and that's the point, <laughs> we're getting to the point I wanted to put across, is that the best part of the maze is that the maze does not have a four-channel mixer mode that you can select. It does not have a four-channel matrix mode. It does not have a four-channel gate, patterns, trigger, clock, mixer, router mode that you need to go find and select. It doesn't have a feedback mode. It doesn't have a drone evolving texture mode that you can select. It doesn't have specifically a stereo mixer with stereo send and return mode that you can select. It doesn't have step sequencer mode to send you know, CV out. It doesn't have a, a specific wave sequencing audio switcher mode. It doesn't. The point is that there is no menu diving based on mode selection. You don't have to find or remember where these different modes are. There are no modes of that type. So the maze remains simple to use. And I will go through the interface and show you how to use it in different scenarios in later videos. I will do a practical example of all those patch types I mentioned earlier, but that will be in follow-up videos. Anyway, I was saying the maze remains simple to use because it only has three modes that you need to interact with, remember, more frequently. Just three easy modes to do all those things mentioned earlier on. And these three modes are, first is the save mode, well, let's say the preset mode. Practically, it's the top level mode, it's the one you see right here. You see this dancing, playing LED, animated LEDs. That means you are in play mode, you are in preset playback mode. It's where all your saved presets are and you are going to play them back. You're going to play with your presets. So it's play mode or save mode. And on this top level mode, you can directly access 16 presets. As I mentioned before, you can use trigger signals at the selection, at the select input to trigger the following preset. You can use CV modulation to modulate between presets. And again, you can immediately change between these presets or you can add some fading time, some morphing time. The second mode, it's practically where you edit your presets. So you select any preset you want to edit, let's say the first one, and you press this big black button, the function button, press. Now, what do you see? You see this LED animation showing an arrow going in and out. What does that make you think about? Well, it makes you think about inputs and outputs. So you don't even have to guess which mode is this. This is the input output editing screen. It's your routing screen. It's your routing mode. These on the left are your four inputs. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the four outputs are here per each input. So for example, let's say you want to send input one fully open with the VCA fully open to output four. You select input one, output four. Now only this one is highlighted because I just pressed one. And you can fully open the VCA. Now you can press and turn for bigger increments so you can quickly go negative, positive if you have set it as a bipolar VCA. Or you can not press, so you just rotate the encoder left and right for more fine value change. So let's fully open this one, so it's 99. This means the VCA between input 1 and output 4 is fully open. So input 1 is present in full at output 4. To save it, you just press this big button again. Right, you don't need to look for the save button. You, you want to edit, uh, you want uh, input 3 
to also go to output four, but not fully open. So input three, output four. Let's set this uh, to, to 55, 52, whatever. Save. And now we have this input one fully open going to output four, input three, VCA partially open going to output four. And maybe let's say you also want input one to go to output one, but you want to invert the signal. So input one, output one, and you go negative, full inverted, 99, minus 99, red 99, save. To go back to your playback mode where you can play this preset, you get out of it, and look, playing animation, playful animation, I'm in playback mode, I'm in play mode. You can change another preset if you had something else edited, but going back to preset one, just to show that the editing did work, we enter the in out mode, and here we have negative input one to output one, fully open input one to output four, and the partially open input three to output four. One more thing in the input output routing mode, is that you can edit more than one node at the same time. So let's say, for example, you want the you want all four inputs to be present to both channel one and two in full. This time you press and hold the first and last of your selection. You see, I'm holding input one, output one, and I'm holding input four, output two, and I can fully open all of them and save. Now I have these ones fully open. This is also very handy live. Let's say you, you have things playing and you want to gradually fade something off and you didn't have a preset for it. You simply hold it and then you can slowly, or oh, in a faster way with pushing and rotating, moving them to uh, zero. Or you can even go negative if it's appropriate for what you're doing. It's just a faster way. And of course you can do it for a different kind of chunks of section. You could do, for example, from uh, here to here, fully open, and now everything between first and last, it's fully open. And if you want to change it again, now it's all closed. Just an easy way to change a lot of input output relationship in one go. The third mode it's simply the mute and unmute screen or mode. You access this one directly with the mute button. That's it. And it shows you a kind of X animation, X for cancel, X for mute and unmute. So again, you don't need to think too much about it. Oh, I see X animated on screen. It means that's where I can X <laughs> my uh, routings. So let's say you had this one playing and you want to mute input one going to input four. Let's say it's muted. You also want to mute input three going to output four. Let's say it is muted. You can mute multiple things. Okay. You can unmute multiple things. You can unmute one at a time. And you can also. Uh, now imagine this were maybe uh, trigger patterns going to percussive module. So you have a drum uh, beat going on and it's a little bit uh, empty right now because you are in a low moment of the track and then you want everything to kick on, quickly unmute. Well, to kick off actually, <laughs> unmute everything. And uh, yeah, back to the uh, play mode. Now, I kind of lied for a minute or so <laughs> when I said that there are only three modes. Well, I didn't lie because I said that there are only three modes you use more frequently. There are actually two more modes. There is a preview mode to quickly look at the content, the routing of a preset, and there is a settings mode where you apply a deeper level, uh, you know, lower level settings like uh, how the encoder works for each output. Are you going to use an attenuator or an attenuverter? You can change the speed for the morph. I left these two modes out earlier on in the video because there are no modes you would access frequently to create those patches we are talking about. Well, the preview mode you may do, the preview mode you simply press mute and function together. 
and you see this, well, it looks like a mouth, but it, it, it's an eye, right? It's supposed to be an eye. Uh, so it's your peek, your preview mode into your preset. What you do, you can press any preset and it will tell you what's the routing for the preset. So for preset one, you can see we have four inputs inverted on the first output for all four. And the first input is also inverted coming out of the output two. All these blue ones means they are at zero, so they're closed. And the input one, output four, it's fully open. Now, if you were to use the preview mode and you were to use the maze normally, you're not going to stay so long. It's like a quick peek. Open. Okay. These are inverted. This is fully open. One to four. Okay. Then another uh, preset. Oh, on this one, I only have two going out of four. Easy, right? It's, it's a way for you to quickly get and see what's going on in any of your presets. This is a little bit more mixed. And you exit by pressing function again. So just press these two together and you are into the preview mode. Easily identifiable by an eye. So it's previewing what you're doing. The last mode, the settings mode, you just hold function down and you are into the settings mode. In settings mode, you can change your banks. Every time you press this, it changes to a different bank and uh, you have a different color per bank, six banks, but it also tells you here, now this is red and this is bank three. Press again, bank four. I want to go back to bank one, so five, six, one. And I also know it's the bright green bank one. So that's where you change the banks. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the settings. We will see the settings in action when we have something patched in, so you can actually see what, what's changing. This one will change the uh, select input from uh, random to Euclidean fade, so you can fade between presets as you trigger them, continuous, which is good for uh, CV, you know, control voltage modulation, so you can continuously read those CVs coming in and modulate between the presets, selection, and the trigger will be a trigger for now, which means like with every trigger, it moves to the next preset. I'm not going to touch this one because this is to calibrate the device. And it comes calibrated from factory, so you don't need to really go there unless there is something you feel wrong. This one is to change the morphing multiplier. Slow is how fast you morph between presets if you're applying morph. Fast. A quick. And the medium. I'll leave it to medium for now. This one, refers, uh, this one is to change the encoder response. It's uh, if you wanted to like it, to catch up with the value before it changes, or if you want instant change. Uh, I prefer instant usually. This one is for when you connect multiple uh, maze together. You can connect one to four, one up up to four uh, maze devices for a bigger metrics, which is great if you have a you know very big system. And last but not least, for each output, you can decide: Do I want um, the VCA to be just an attenuator or an attenuverter, and you can change that for each of the four outputs. Um, if you're using it for CVs, uh, you may want to use the, of course, the, well, the attenuverter so you can have negative values. Uh, if you're using it for audio and you want to quickly, you know, mute or go to zero or just you know, shut off a channel, you may want to, you, you may prefer to use the attenuator, right? You just try and see what works for you. So again, I didn't mention these two modes before because really you only needed the playback, the editing mode and the mute for performance reason to do most of all those type of patches that we talked about before and other patches you can come up with. The preview mode is just very, well, it's, it's very useful for a quick look at uh, things, but again, it's, it's not like something you need to edit and to use the device. And the settings mode, again, you know, once you set up the way you want your VCAs, once you set up the type of uh, morph speed you want, uh, chances are you're not going to change those settings during the one patch, during the one music track. Uh, you're probably only going to change it when you start from scratch with a new patch, or who knows, you may not change until next month. So, you know, it's not frequently you're going to get into the settings. The potential, the actual value 
of what you can do with it, the variety of things you can do with the maze, all comes from how you can use its core features and functionality. And you can do that in, in several different ways. And that's it. Just three modes to do a lot of stuff. And the key point is that this is not like other multifunctional digital modules where you must remember where and how to access each mode, like you will need to do on uh, an old distinct MK3, you know, the one that didn't even have a display, a text display, or even on, 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 on clouds or on an ornament and crime, gray module, lot of functionality, but you have to access different modes to do specific, specifically different things. I mean, in the case of, the, of modules like the old distinct MK3, which is the one I have, Unless I use it often, I will forget where is what and how to access different modes. And I might end up using this thing for one tenth of what it can really do, which is a shame because I'm not getting you know, a lot of value out of it, but it's my fault for not using it often enough. That's not the case in my experience with the maze because, sorry if I repeat myself, but the maze only has three modes and you can do tons of stuff. Play full LEDs, I'm in playback mode, in, out, oh, I'm in the input, output, routing mode, X. I can mute stuff and unmute stuff. This is your select input to select or sequence, if you want to sequence them, uh, preset changes. These are your four inputs and these are your four outputs. The matrix section and controlling the VCA opening and closing or inversion of it, of it per each uh, output. And let's not forget, you can morph fade between these preset settings. So for now, I simply wanted to put the point across that the maze itself, while you can use it to create any of those setup mentioned earlier, mixer, feedback, uh, evolving drones, whatever, there is no deep or complex multi-mode menu diving with 15 or more different editing pages, one per each type of patch. No. There are only three modes. If you are not new to modular and to matrix mixers, you already know what I'm about to say next, I think. But if you are new to modular, you may be asking, if the maze only has three main modes, how can you get to all those other modes, patching setups and so on? And that is the cool part of this module. Because at its core, this is a signal routing switching matrix mixer module. And because of the clever design and implementation of features like recallable presets, of course, editable presets, uh, se sequenceable presets, uh, the option to morph or quick changes between presets, it is you that can use this module and these features in so many different ways. It practically depends on what you place at these inputs, audio, control voltage, gates, clocks, how you route those signals to the outputs, and where you send these outputs to, to a filter, to an effect, to uh, VCOs, whatever. And if you send any of those signals back to any of the inputs for feedback, for example, feedback loops, send the return effect patches. So it's how you use it that allows the maze to act function as a mixer, a mixer with sends the brain of a feedback patch or a drone patch. Um, you may have a wave, so audio, and the inputs that you quickly switch and sequence between them. So you can use it as a wave sequencer or, or an audio switcher module. You can uh, sequence between presets and it can be a, a 16 steps sequencer. And you have four channels of it, a pattern selector, a pattern mixer to go to drum modules, and so on and so on and so on. It's what you do with it. So it's a mix of great flexibility and your ways of using the inputs, the outputs, and its features that lets you achieve so many different setups, patches. And that's why you can get, or I get, a lot of value out of it. These 12 HPs are always useful, no matter what patch I'm doing, no matter what patch you may be doing. So that's why it's probably in 80% of my patches. The other 20% of the cases, uh, it's not there because sometimes <laughs> I am way too lazy to physically uh, move it from one Eurorack case to another Eurorack case where it might be doing something different. But otherwise, it would probably be in, in more than 80% of my patches. 
Now, one last thing I want to come back to and mention is that the newer current black version of this module is just the same in terms of features and functionality. The only difference, as far as I know, apart from the different color, is the absence of these green and black grid lines. I am mentioning this because you may have uh, this same earlier version or you may buy a second-hand module, who knows. But I'm mentioning it because <laughs> um, these grid lines were cause of confusion for what I call my noob focus group. Some of my friends are uh, very light, sporadic Eurorack users, or even Synth users for that matter. They define themselves as forever noobs because they rarely get time, sadly, to play with their Eurorack and Synth stuff. So they tend to forget how to do things and end up only using their modules very few times per year, practically. So they can provide me with uh, great feedback on first impression over a module from the point of view of not experienced users. By now, you know that these are your four inputs, input one, two, three, four, and these are your four outputs, output one, output two, output three, and output four. So along the green lines, you have the inputs, and along the black lines, these are like the containers of everything that goes into output four, the container of everything that goes into output three, the container for output two and output one. So this may have some of input one, none of input two, three, four, whatever is your settings, and the, everything is mixed to one single output. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Every single one <laughs> of my noob mates as they call themselves, I'm not calling the noob, they call themselves noob, so you know, it's a little bit of a joke that goes between us. They thought that, uh, yes, these were the outputs, but they thought that these were the inputs, like input one, two, three, four, going down into the outputs. I don't know why they all got confused in the same way, but of course, because they thought that this was input three going to output one, for whatever reason, uh, when they were trying to edit, program a preset, they weren't getting what they were trying to achieve. So the reason is that uh, because they saw the grid and the red in the manual, uh, green uh, is the inputs, or because of the grid, they thought that maybe everything is linked, you can send this to the, I, I don't know, I don't know what they thought, but uh, they, mainly they thought that these were the inputs. And of course, if they were trying to send input four somewhere else, input 4 wasn't going anywhere because input 4 is down here. These are the outputs for input 4. So be because they were getting confused with uh, the vertical lines, what I did, I just used some paper to mask the vertical lines and, and, and actually sent them a picture. And they went, of course, I told them that the inputs were on the left. And, and they went, ah, right, now I get it. And so the other few guys got it as well. So these are the inputs on the left, and the input moves towards the right, towards the four outputs. And as it moves, first it goes into the output one, <laughs> then the output two, then three and four. Sorry if I'm smiling, but that's how they, they react, and that's how they answer to the picture with these pieces of paper. And since then, they say, okay, it's clear now, now I get it. You got the inputs, and each input can go into these outputs. But until I put that piece of paper here, uh, yeah, the grid was confusing them. So I don't know if this is useful to anyone that uh, maybe uh, had bought this second hand, just had it, and I don't know. It, it may be a total waste of time, this thing I did right now. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'll leave it in the video. It may be useful to some, I don't know. Now, I'm happy to say that uh, the new faceplate does not have these grid lines. Uh, it has input and outputs for the rows. So it's kind of uh, more empty, simpler design, but maybe more efficient and maybe more explicit than a grid that you need to try and understand. Right, I think this was enough talking without audio, without some patch examples. So I think I'm going to do a patch example now anyway, so we can have a patch audio example in this video as well. Some of these modules around the maze, they already set to work with each other because I was doing a different thing before. So they, they tuned, I think, hopefully, and have some settings that should work. So we can concentrate on the maze and not the actual voices and the effects.
In this case, I'm going to do a mixer, maybe a mixer with uh, stereo sender return. And so we can see quite a few different things we can do with the maze. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's uh, take, um, let's use the braids and rings. So I'm going to send some trigger to the braids. I'm going to send some uh, uh, CVs to braids. One volt per octave input. And the output of braids goes to the input one on the maze because that's where I want to send it. Let's get rings set up as well. Triggers. We're getting trigger three from uh, OS. And CV3. And rings, I get the even output and I send it to input two. Now, you cannot hear anything yet because the outputs are not going anywhere. So, I'm going to send input 1 and input 2 to my DAW. I already have these two channels on, on the DAW set and um, um, panned left and right because I'm going to use this as a stereo output. So, let's say plug one in and the other one in. Okay. Now, we can't really hear anything yet because we did not open the attenuators to get this audio signal from the inputs to the outputs. We didn't do any routing yet. Now, before I do the routings, because I'll be mainly dealing with audio here, I don't want to use attenuators. I want to use attenuators. So I go into the settings menu, just hold the function down. And you see these four buttons down here? They are red because they indicate that you can invert the signal. But in this case, I only want to use zero to fully open, just attenuators. That's all you need to do. And you can also have a different setting, attenuator, attenuator per output. Now, if I go inside this preset, input and outputs, okay, just to start to hear some sound, I want input one to go to output one. And I'm going actually to fully open. And I want input two, go to output two. At the moment, I have braids on the left and rings on the right, but that's not what I want. I want to send each input to both output. Uh, the reason is um, I'm going to use the output three and four to go into a stereo effect and coming back with a stereo return left and right, which will then go to the left and right of the DAW. So in, my, in this case, I want to send each of these two inputs to both outputs. and save. I saved it just by pressing function. So now we have braids input one going out to both outputs and rings input two going to both outputs. Okay, now I did this just to show you the individual routing of these inputs, but I actually want these two inputs to also be present at output three and four, because I want to send copies of these signals to the effect unit. What this means is that I want input one to be present to all the outputs, and I want input two to be present to all the outputs. So I can simply hold my first and last selection, input to output one to four, and input two to output one to four. And that's it. Now, both inputs are present to all four outputs. You could have had simply one input go going out of one output and the other input going out of the other output as two mono channels into your uh, DAW recorder or whatever. Uh, the reason why I am uh, having both present at both uh, outputs is because I want to do the mix inside the maze. And this is why I'm sending both inputs to output 3 and output 4, because I want to send these two outputs out as a left and right input on my stereo effect unit. 
I will apply some reverb, I will only get the wet sound out of that reverb, and I will come back into input three and four, which means input one and two are my raw voices, and input three and four are going to be the left output and the right output of my stereo effect processor. Right, now I'm going to take output three and send it out into an effect chain and output four and do the same thing. So one will end up into the left input of the stereo reverb and one will end up into the right input of the stereo reverb. But just for fun, I'm going through a couple of filters first, just to add uh, some modulation to the filter and have some more chaos, more modulation in the sounds. So this one, I will send it to the input of the VCF5, the A124. And uh, this one, I'm sending it into the input of Belgrade. And then the bandpass output of this, I'm sending it to the left input of the stereo effect unit, which is a happy nerding FX8XL. And the output of this filter, it's going to go into the right input of the effect unit. What we need to do now is take the stereo output of the FX8 and send it back as a return into the mixer. So I'm going to take the left output and sending it to input three. And the right output and send it to return, well, to input four. Okay. You cannot hear the effect part yet because I didn't know open the VCAs for input three and four yet. The effect unit is set on a reverb and it's fully wet. So we're only getting the wet reverb out of it. You can only hear the raw sound because the effect return, which is input three and four, I'm not sending them anywhere yet. You see, input three is switched off and four. Input three and input four are switched off for all the outputs. So now I want to add input three, which is my left output of the stereo channel to output one because it goes to the left input of my of my sound card and I want input four to go out of output two because this goes to the right input of my sound card and now you can hear the raw sound plus this reverb effect. I'm just going to change the dry and wet on the effect unit. So just so you can kind of hear what's going on. Uh, but that's not all. For some added fun, I'm going to add some modulation. Take a sine wave here to the uh, filter, which is on the output tree. I'm going to add some modulation to the Belgrade and also to the resonance of the Belgrade. Dry sound with the filters and with the reverb. So what you can do now is change the amount of audio that from input one braids goes into the outputs or, you know, so you can balance the audio levels between the two inputs. You can also only edit maybe how much you send to output three and four for each of these two voices. So you can send different amounts to the effect chain, which altogether will give a different sound when it's mixed together. Or you can change how much of this effect return is actually mixed with the main, with the final output. And 
so why don't we create a few different presets so we can have a modifications of this same patch and we can sequence between them and so on. Let's have a look at that. Okay. Now, because I'm going to create the modifications of the same patch, one quick way of doing this is to copy and paste this initial preset in a few more slots and then we are going to edit the slots. This one is the preset we just created and we go empty slots. To quickly copy and paste, you go into preview mode where the eye is and you hold where you, where you want to copy from and then you tap where you want to paste to. So I'm holding the first preset and showing you a preview of what we have here and I'm going to paste it to a few more locations. Five should be enough. Indeed, if we go now into preset play, these five presets, four and five, they are all the same. What I think I want to do is for the first preset, I only want the raw dry sound. That means I'm going to close the VCA for the input three and four, which is where we have the effect return. Okay, so this is only input one and two going to the outputs. And that's the first preset. For the second one, edit. I'm going to change the amount of uh, effect return to maybe 40. So we, we, get, we have some effect in the save. And uh, for the third preset function to go into editing mode, Okay, we, yeah, we can leave it as it is, so we have full volume for the effect return. So, so far we have braids and rings with some effect and full effect mixed in. For preset 4, what we can do, we could have just braids, so, and only a little bit of rings. So, rings, which is on the input 2, I don't want it out of uh, input one and two. Okay. And uh, I only want to send it a little bit into the outputs that go to the effect chain. So I'm going to lower this. A little bit. So this is both voices and the effect zone, right, the synth, bass sound, and the plucky thing at the top. Here the rings guitar, <laughs> guitar is almost gone. And for preset 5 we do the opposite, we take braids down, and we only send it a little bit to three and four. Okay. And so these are our presets. And they're changing quite drastically, right? full effect, quiet, because there is no morphing applied. So if we want a smoother change between presets, actually before we get there, we could uh, sequence them and then we can apply morph. So just to show you something about sequencing, let's get an LFO from uh, a sine wave from Batumi, we had one free anyway, and put it into the preset select input. And we're going into the settings, all down function. This one is to change the way the sequencer responds to the input. So we change this to continuous because we're sending a continuous CV. That's continuous. So go back to presets. And uh, we see the way it's changing. Now it's already. Let me see, this is probably because I already have this attenuated. So once you are in preset mode and you have something uh, present at the select input, you can just change uh, the encoder position to change the range of how many slots the control voltage will go through. 
And of course you make it, you can make it go slower. This is just to show you how the range works. But because we only have presets on the first five, I can bring the range down. Yeah, so that the sine wave only changes between my selection of uh, presets. Okay? But no, we're not going to use this one to change like that. On the Variegate 4 Plus, I already have a set of CDs that gradually increase in value to gradually move this selection along. And so... The first two CVs are at the minimum, and they correspond to selection one. The second one is the same. Then CV goes up a little bit, and it selects the second preset. The next CVs are a little bit higher. Goes to preset three. This is also to show you that if you have multiple sequencers, uh, you can clock them all well, with the same clock, and then you can use multipliers, dividers, and an XCV, and an XCV, so you can synchronize variations if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to let this one manage my preset, I'm just going to sc go scroll through them. But I want to get rid of this uh, drastic change between the presets, I want some morph. So, if I apply some morphing, to apply morphing, you simply go into edit of any preset. You don't touch any routing, you just move the encoder. And I'm applying some, I mean, it's not the amount of morphing. What you're changing is how quickly it morphs into the new preset or between the values of the current and next preset. Now you will see that it will not just go without effect, it will gradually Take the effects away, and now you have the dry sound of the first preset. And now it's gradually bringing the effects in. It's, it's great. In case this doesn't show it clearly enough, let me do something for you. Let me take this out. Let me uh, change the selection to trigger sync, so it's not waiting for this CVs coming in. And uh, let me get rid of the morph. Zero speed means it's no morphing. Okay, now, look at this. I have the pre this preset, or oh, I have this one with full effects. And then when I go back to preset one, there is no effect. It's a, there is a very drastic change. And again, it goes to full effect because I have the effect channels fully open on this preset. But if we add morph 40, so it's gradual, it's not too slow, it's not too fast. Now, when I change the first preset that has no effect channels in, you will see it will gradually take the effects channels out. Into the dry sound. And if I go back to the preset, which has the effect channels fully open, it will gradually introduce those new settings, which, you know, what we hear, is like it's gradually introducing the, um, the reverb. You can have it a little bit faster if you want. Let's say 20. So it quickly goes to the settings of this preset, which does not have the reverb coming in. So now it brings the settings of this preset a little bit quicker. I was going to record overall thoughts at the end of this series, but I thought, well, let's include some thoughts now on this uh, first longer video. And by thoughts, I mean uh, considerations, pro, 
cons so far. Now, if you're used to one knob per function or large graphic displays, the maze may at first appear to be not very explicit. The front panel was something that did concern me at first when I took the module out of the box, because you know there are going to be features on some level of a menu. Not everything is displayed on the, on the faceplate. You know that this is not a module you can plug in and make full use of it without reading the instructions or at least watching a tutorial video. But what I found out after a few hours of use and then after using it a lot because I, I actually like it, it's a very cool module. I love the fact that the front panel is so clean and tidy. By that I mean it's good that there are no multicolor labels like red when you are in the save menu, blue when you are in the mute menu. Because in reality, the actions that you perform on the maze, they are very repetitive. You build the muscle memory really quick. And in terms of complexity, if you break it down to it being a matrix router mixer, I mean, if you can operate a matrix mixer and you get the idea that any input can go to any one or more of the outputs, and you can attenuate or invert the signal, then that's all there is about it. You see, everything else like uh, save, recall, sequence, fade, copy, paste, mute, bipolar, unipolar, they are nothing complicated because saving and recalling, you are just saving and recalling the routing you edited. The editing, it's about selecting nodes and, and changing the values. The values are clearly displayed on the display, and there is also color-coded feedback about where you are with the values. That is the complexity of the module. I mean, th that's what you do most frequently on the module. The fact that it has save and you can recall the presets, I mean, how hard is it to choose the preset you want or to put a CV in here so it cycles through? Yes, there are options on the sequencing, which is great, but it's all about features that super enhance the functionality of it as a matrix mixer, but there are no super deep features with built-in sub-levels of uh, menus and editing. It's all features that take the matrix router mixer to another level. But it is about selecting what you edited. It's about sequencing what you edited. It's about adding or no a fade to when you change presets. But it, it's all like little touches on the routing. If you can do the routing, you can use the maze. And I went from that uh, first reaction, just looking at the module, thinking, hmm, this may have some hidden feature to, to deal with, to actually being able to use it with a good speed just after a few hours. Yes, I read the manual, I tried the things out. It's not hard at all. Which means LiveSock Electronics did an extremely good job in uh, features selection, implementation of those features, and accessibility, user accessibility. I honestly did not expect this to be as easy to use as it revealed to be. What about the cost? Because the Maze is not a cheap module. Now, having said that, if you compare it to other 4x4 matrix mixers with not only 16 VCAs, of course, but also a muting, well, bipolar and or unipolar option, the magic of being able to save and recall presets, sequencing them, automatic fades, etc. It does add a lot of functionality to your system. And having some form of preset creation and recalling can help you get more value out of your whole system, especially when performing live with a size limited setup. Each preset can give you a totally different sounding voice for your next track or within sections of the same track. So for the same number of installed modules, for the same number of synth voices, you can have a totally different sounding voices at the touch of a button. It kind of helps you getting more value. It amplifies the value of anything you connect to it. So yeah, it can be a very valuable addition for only 12 HPs, but it has its price. So if what it does is what you are looking for, to be honest, you will be using it so much, like I do, that it's kind of worth it. What about external CV control? In modular, we like to have CV inputs for everything, right? Well, there is only one select input you use for selecting or sequencing your presets. So if you're after external CV control of your routing, 
with CV control over 16 VCAs, then no, of course, this is not it. But that also means you were not looking for this module in the first place, or you were looking at this one wrong. This is a portable 12 HP controller module. This is the controller of other destination devices. And yes, of course, you could have a CV control of a VCA matrix mixer. There are other larger matrix mixers with more CV control. But the intended use of this, I think, was always the one to create presets for your patches and performances. You then recall the presets and you can still modify VCAs on the fly. And you can modify one VCA or you can modify many VCA at the same time, which is, which is a big thing. But let's say you create your presets and then you recall them. So with these, you create your VCA modulations, fades, mixing, and save them as presets. So instead of uh, then having to use external CV control sources to modify your 16 VCAs, you recall and switch or morph and sequence through those VCA changes that you prepared beforehand. Those changes you would have to perform live with 16 CV sources or external sequencers if you didn't have this one with the presets. So again, this is the controller that is going to change other things around it. It's a different use case and an excellent solution for the intended use case. Now, is it too small? Should it have one knob per function? Does it feel like it should have been bigger and have one knob per VCA and so on? Well, if this had one knob per VCA, 16 knobs, it would have been much bigger. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm a genius. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's pretty obvious. Uh, but it would also probably be more expensive. But then it wouldn't be as portable. I mean, if this was this big, you would need to sacrifice a lot of space in a smaller case. Bigger matrix mixes are usually for fixed installation for your main big uh, monster setup. And even if, of course, you could chain up to four of these to control a much bigger setup. Honestly, if uh, these had been bigger, I would have been using it much less because I would only use it, install it in my uh, Dopfer monster case indeed. And I would not have mounted it in the handful of smaller portable cases. I often use, even if because COVID only around the house, uh, in the if I want to jump in the garden or take it and play around with it in, in bed or the sofa in the lounge, if it was bigger, it, I, you know, I would need to sacrifice other things like have fewer voices or fewer uh, uh, other modules and so on. So it would just sit on the main case. I would only use it when I have the time to sit in front of the main system. So I, for one, grew to really appreciate the power and flexibility of this module in only 12 HPs. And about the one knob per function, well, first of all, there are 16 buttons anyway, so you can directly access any of the 16 VCAs, and it's pretty direct to access one and edit. But not only that, there is something you cannot do with the other normal routing mixers, but you can select quite a lot of them at the same time and edit them, all of them together. I mean, this is huge, especially in live performance where you may want to change CV control or, or VCA control of uh, maybe multiple voices or multiple destinations and change a lot of things at the same time. That's actually pretty unique. You may not have that on a standard, even if it's you no know, bigger size routing matrix mixer. About the only one knob, push knob, well, we only have two hands. And with the 16 buttons, you can also mute. VCA is one at a time, many at a time, so I'll mute them or I'll mute them. So you do have some one per one control on the VCAs, but you only have one knob. Now, we only have two hands anyway, so even if we had a lot of knobs around, I mean, you can only twist comfortably two at a time. So instead of being able to twist two, you can twist one. But as I said before, because the way it is, you can actually select more VCAs at the same time and change a lot of them at the same time, which again, you cannot do if this was a routing mixer, you can only do two at a time. Now, don't get me wrong, on a VCO filter module, it's always great to have that one knob per function, very, very different parameters. 
But here, really, we're talking about that one type of parameter, mainly attenuating or inverting one or more BCAs. So the power of this thing in 12 HPs, power and ease of use after you spend a few hours with it, and realize that there is no deep multi-level menu diving. I mean, yeah, there are three main modes, but that's the extent of it. You know, it's your preset selection mode, your editing mode, and there is a mute mode. That's all you're going to do most of the times. So, so I'm actually thankful that this thing exists in such format with these features. And even if uh, this was sent to me, if I had to send this thing back, I would actually need to buy a replacement straight away. Because as I have been telling you, I use this thing a lot. I mean, next to my sequencers, this has, this has quickly become one of my favorite modules. And by the way, it also feels good in use. I mean, there is no cheap, wobbly feel anywhere. Everything gets spot on. So at its core, the maze is a router switcher mixer matrix with 16 bipolar or unipolar VCAs. And uh, it lets you save banks of presets with your routing settings and levels uh, between inputs and outputs. And you can also change values quickly in real time for live performance. And I can probably show some of that in the following video. In conclusion for uh, this episode, the variety of ways in which you can make good use of the maze has nothing to do with making the maze hard to use. Because it doesn't matter what you use the maze for, in this or that type of patch, the maze itself only allows you to send any of these four inputs to any one or more of the four outputs in different amounts, inverted or not inverted, save that as a preset, and then you can swap preset, morph between presets, mute and unmute routings. Practically, you can use or patch the maze in many different ways, and that's why the maze, although being relatively simple, it can give you an amazing time. Sorry, <laughs> I had to say that. Anyway, and you can get a lot of good value out of it. If you would like to learn more about the maze, its basic functionality, go through specific use cases, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you won't miss the next videos in the series. I will be building one or two totally different patches per video so you can practically see those patches from scratch. If you already have the maze, please let me know in the comments below so other viewers can read it too, how you use the maze, what is your preferred way to patch it, are you finding it easy or hard to use, is this video helpful so far? If you don't own the maze, but you have been researching it, is there a specific use case you would like me to cover in one of the following videos? Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video where appropriate. As usual, have fun and keep your rocking.